support services. So this is kind of wealth management, uh, people well, helping people with their investment choices. It's banks, it's, it's insurance, it's brokerage firms, it's financial advisors, it's all that kind of collection of things. Management and innovation services. So this is kind of a new term, right? Innovation services. This is a lot of consultants. Scientific, technical, business consulting, management consulting. It, why we call it innovation services because typically these are firms that don't have their own product per se. What they do is they help other companies. So they provide some expert assistance that might help some company with the design of their product or uh, improvement of their process or practice. <coughs> and as a result, the other company, their client, innovates. Now, a lot of these companies have customers that aren't just local. The old mindset is well, these are you know local companies help lo other local companies. Many of these companies have are very, very highly um, skilled and employees, highly paid employees, and they are serving global markets. They have customers all over the place. So they're, they're actually a wealth creator, not just a local serving business service. Interesting. The final area is niche manufacturing. So when we took a look at this information, first of all, before we got the new information, you couldn't find much of anything in the contract. Or you'd find it decline, right? You look at some of your more traditional such as forest products and those kind of things. You look over a long period of time, you find decline. You just can't find uh, a good news story necessarily in there. Took a look at the more of the data. We found there's some dynamism in there. Kind of looked at, you know, we looked at it across different sectors. People looked, you know, we couldn't figure out what's the theme, what's the theme of manufacturing. It turned out there wasn't one. The theme was this is a region that is a great home for small scale specialty manufacturers, uh, precision manufacturers who are doing quite well there. Then it was actually started talking to some of these sure many of you know some of these people. They're doing unbelievable world-class manufacturing from this, their work from this platform in a predominantly rural area. And why? Because they love the quality of life. They are here because they love to live here. They are talented people that can be driving a world-class business anywhere. They choose to be here because of the quality of life. Extremely important asset that many, believe it or not, many rural areas overlook. You know, Catherine was alluding to you sell yourself. When you sell yourself cheap, you, you look, you, you overlook those kind of components that people are here driving world class business because they want to live here. Now, maybe this doesn't come to surprise you, and you're all kind of saying, well, of course we know that. <laughs> and that's great, but many don't. And that is, and we can show how that is, there's a real tie to that um, uh, real important pattern. Okay. So across these, we got we have these six areas, right? Yeah. Well, that's great. You might be thinking to yourself, but that's about ten percent of the economy. You know, these are little niche areas and you know little boutiquey kind of stuff. Well, you add them all up, and they actually are thirty-nine percent of the jobs, private sector jobs in this region. And that's up from thirty percent in nineteen ninety. So what we did, we actually took a look at a long period of time, about fifteen years, nineteen ninety. This is up to 2004 when we did this. We have the data, the latest data that's available. But it was a long period of time. The reason we did that is that we did not want to see something that might have just been a spike up during a recent business cycle. Our view is if you look at something over a long period of time like that, you're going to see it through several business cycles. And you're going to see if there's a structural change in the economy over a long period of time, that you have some sort of structural advantage to a set of industries. So it builds up our confidence factor that this truly is a comparative advantage for your region, as opposed to, well, this looked good now, and then, well, there it goes, you know? Um, so that's an important part. Now, in addition to 39%, 53% of the private sector wages. That's pretty important, and I, you'll see in a second, it's even more important in Mendocino, right? Higher percentage of your private sector wages in Mendocino. So compared to the rest of the private sector, Surprisingly, these six target areas, which are multiple uh, sectors, grew much faster over this time period. Number, number of firms grew much faster, 22% growth in firms over that 14 year period. And wage growth, depending on the sector, from 10 to 26%. And as you see here, just real quickly across the six sectors, the job growth figures over this time period, firm growth, and their wage growth, and that's real wage growth after we control for inflation. So that's
That's a good news sec good news story in this country. Now, we go back. We go back. Obviously, you know, 40%, now some of you might be mathematicians in the audience, you're already making this calculation. 40% of your jobs, uh, your economy is this, and your overall and the rest of it is this. Or, or overall, this is the figure, including this. And you know a lot of the rest of the economy. Guess which one got your headlines in the last 50 years? When you had job declines, that sure got the headlines, didn't it? Okay? The, and as Kathy alluded, the problem is, it's not because somebody's got an agenda here to tell the, back, the worst story possible, but the, the challenge here is that a lot of this stuff happens kind of under the radar. First of all, the numbers weren't there. You couldn't even see the numbers because of confidentiality issues. Secondly, even if you could see the numbers, it's hard because they're not large, these aren't necessarily large visible companies. A lot of small operations that are adding employees and doing incredible stuff. And everybody's got their favorite story, right? Their own anecdotes about great success stories 